problems. If you have a look here, this is exercise 11B. So one of the sort of beginning exercises, they just want you to get familiar with how to represent matrices. So here in this table, you've got a set of data. So we can see that we've got weights, aerobics, fitness, males, and females. So along the rows, rows represent the gender, and then you have columns represent the gym type of membership you have. So when they say the table opposite shows the three types of membership of a local gym, uh, da, 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 construct a matrix to display this numerical information in the table. You would have done this as an intro from last year that you know you can do a matrix where you know there's two rows, two rows, male and female, and then you know that you have three columns. So here we have weight, aerobics, and fitness. So when you put it into this matrix, it would be 16, 104, 86, 75, 34, and 94. Okay, so that would be representing. So that's that's what they want you to get familiar with. How do you take a matrix and put it into an application type problem? That's the entry level. Okay, so you find an 11B is quite nice in entry. Uh, when you're doing the, the next three questions, they'll tell you, you know, convert the 16 digit credit card number uh, into a two by eight matrix. What you're trying to do is again, put them into a matrix form. So 11B, I would say that for most of you, that is quite familiar and then you, you'll be able to do it. Then I uh, saw this part and I thought, oh yeah, maybe some of you might know and then some of you may not know. Hands up if representing networks using matrices is familiar. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, back and forth. All right, cool. This one here. If you've never uh, sort of dealt with networks before or you don't remember it, to put into a matrix form, again, they already told you what size to do. Technically, they don't need to, but since they've already guided you, it's a four by four matrix because you have one, two, three, four. There are four points in a network. So the number of networks, number of points you have, that's how you're going to make your matrices. Okay. Now, in this matrix form, it's a very simple idea. You're gonna do a four by four, so you can think of it as one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. That represents the dot points. Now, how do you fill it out? The numbers, and they try to guide you here, they say matrix element equals one if two points are joined by a line. What are they trying to say? They're just trying to say that if this point number one is connected to, say, two, then you've got a one. That, that tells you that it connects there, that there's one connection there. Obviously, one is connected to both two and four, and then you can see that two is connected with four, one, and three. So when they want you to, when they say here, one if the two points are joined by a line, well, I know that one and one aren't joined by a line. But one and two is definitely joined by a line, so then I would use one. One is not joined to three. One is not. Uh, one is joined to four. So I would write one. Okay. So you can see that by putting zero, one, zero, one. What this means is there is a connection between one and two, one and four. Okay. So I don't need to see the diagram, but I know that one is connected to four, and one is also connected to two, just by looking at that row. But that also means on the vertical column, it's the same. One is connected to two. One is not connected to three, and one is not connected to four. So there's a symmetrical rule. Okay, so you can expect it will then look one, zero, one, just based on that. And then you do the same. Well, what about point two? So at point two, it is connected to one, it's connected to four, it's connected to three. So you can say two is not connected to itself, but two is connected to three and four. And then you can fill out the same thing. So it becomes this symmetrical look. But that's this is networks. Okay, so I'm applying a matrix so that if you're looking at this matrix and you know the order it's one two three four one two three four by looking at the matrix without the diagram i can already say which one's connected to which that's that's the goal that's what the matrix representation means so in this skill here in this exercise there are two sections one is how do you take a scenario and then represent a matrix form and then how do you represent networks so over here they give you a set of networks they give you a matrix and they want you to interpret the matrix that's what they want you to do okay so that's 11b that's the skill so 
I'm going to leave it there as, as an introduction because I think that most students will be able to sort of digest that. I think you're probably still working between A, C, D, and E. So you've got add, subtract, multiply by a scalar, ma multiply by two matrices. That's D and E at the end there. So you need to be working on powers of matrices, how to do that on a CAS, and then the sums of products. Okay, so pre and post multiplication. I think that's the section that I don't think most students will know. But then 11B is a nice entry level. In the second half of the session, I'm just going to introduce the idea of inverse matrices, providing that you've got a bit more practice with matrix multiplication. Okay? And that's that'll be it for today. Okay, I'll be making videos for each each section. I'll come around and help if you're if you've never done matrices before or you're not very confident with it, I'm happy to come around to make sure you, you've got the basics. Okay? Basics come from chapter 11. By the time you come to chapter 12, there's a lot of assumptions that you now know how to play around with matrices. Okay?